What's up guys? I'm Jose and welcome to episode 2 of NFL Frenzy where I grade and analyze 5 of the latest offseason moves made by your favorite NFL teams. Coming in at number 5, Byron Jones signs a 5 year $82.5 million deal with the Miami Dolphins. The Dolphins start their 2020 spending spree with the acquisition of former Cowboys cornerback Byron Jones. Jones has had a very inconsistent start to his career as he struggled early on with the Cowboys while playing free safety. However, since his 2018 switch to being a full-time outside corner, Jones has racked up 113 tackles, 20 pass deflections, and one forced fumble, and was a Pro Bowl selection in 2018. The Dolphins now have a formidable one-two punch at corner with Jones and the rising star Xavier Howard. Jones significantly boosts the Dolphins' secondary, but it costs him a pretty penny in the process. Therefore, final grade, B. At number four, Austin Hooper signs a four-year, $44 million deal with the Cleveland Browns. The Browns' front office makes yet another blockbuster move as they acquire former Falcons tight end Austin Hooper. When you first hear about the signing, it seems like a great deal for the Browns as they acquire a two-time Pro Bowler and give Baker Mayfield another weapon to throw to. But then you see that in the process, the Browns make Hooper the highest paid tight end in the league. Now don't get me wrong, Hooper is a solid tight end that can give production day in and day out, but in no ways is he the best tight end in the league, nor is he even a top three tight end in the league to be paid as such. All in all, why pay a player as the best in their position when they clearly aren't? Final grade, C+. At number three, Emmanuel Sanders signs a two-year, $16 million deal with the New Orleans Saints. The Saints came into free agency with a glaring issue of not having a solid number two receiver behind arguably the best receiver in the league, Michael Thomas. Thus, the Saints turned to veteran wide receiver Emmanuel Sanders to fill the role. Sanders seems poised to fill this role, but his age and injury history are areas of concern. Sanders will be 33 this season, and his production has been on the decline ever since his 2014 Pro Bowl season, where he posted a career-high 1,400 receiving yards and 9 touchdowns. Since then, Sanders has crossed the 1,000-yard mark only twice. Nonetheless, the Saints give Breeze a formidable weapon alongside Michael Thomas and Alvin Kamara. Final grade, B. Coming in at number 2. Todd Gurley signs a one-year, $6 million deal with the Atlanta Falcons. The Falcons are hoping they struck gold with the signing of former LA Rams running back, Todd Gurley. The Falcons picked up Gurley less than 24 hours after the Rams cut him. With this signing, the Falcons fill the need at running back after cutting Devontae Freeman earlier this month. Even though this is a decent signing, Gurley is coming off of 2019 where he was hampered with injuries and only had just above a thousand yards from scrimmage, a career low. But the Falcons are hoping that Gurley returns to his previous 2017 and 2018 form where he tallied 40 total touchdowns and 3,900 yards from scrimmage between the two seasons, along with being named a pro bowler and to the first team all pro both seasons. Overall, this signing is based off which girl you get in the end. So final grade, B. At number one, the LA Rams send Brandon Cooks and a 2022 fourth round pick to the Houston Texans for a 2020 second round pick. So the Texans make the countdown for the second straight week as they trade for LA Rams wide receiver Brandon Cooks. The Rams are trading away Cooks after a 2019 season where he put up a career low in receiving yards and touchdowns, as he only had 500 yards and two touchdowns. Cooks was also plagued with concussions this season, as he suffered two concussions in a span of 20 days, causing him to miss two games. With the departure of Cooks, the Rams will either use that second round pick on a receiver or count on young receiver Josh Reynolds to step up and fill in for Cooks. Now on to the good old Texans, who yet baffle my mind for the second straight week. So the Texans trade away a top three receiver in DeAndre Hopkins for a running back on the decline and a second round pick. And then they flip that same second round pick for a mid-tier receiver in Cooks. So Texans, if you're going to flip the second for an inferior receiver, what was the point of trading away Hopkins in the first place? The Texans have yet left me so confused. Nevertheless, I'm going to continue my analysis of Cooks and so on. 
Cooks is a solid receiver. That's all he really is. Simply a mid-tier receiver that'll give you a consistent thousand receiving yards, given that he doesn't get injured. But other than that, Cooks doesn't have much more to offer to an offense. Hence why the Rams are the third team to trade away Cooks. Overall, when you can say that the Texans traded away DeAndre Hopkins for Brandon Cooks, David Johnson, and a fourth round pick, not looking too good for their final grade. Texans, D minus. And for the Rams, a solid B plus. And that's all for today's countdown. Tune in next week to see if any of your favorite NFL teams make the countdown.